Now let's look at this Bible study that represents and uh, explains the biblical view of the truth movement. And we begin here with God at the top and what the Bible says. God magnifies his word above his name. If his word is no good, his name is no good. So therefore in Psalm 138, uh, 2, God magnifies his word above his name. The promise of his word, Matthew 24, uh, 35, this is heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. So understanding this is said three times in the Gospels. And then moving on to God and his relation to Jesus, the Son of God, who is God, three in one. Abraham's covenant, Genesis 12, 1 through 3, that is an everlasting covenant that's still with us today. M my firstborn, he calls the Jews and, and Israel. Exodus 4.22, he's called the chosen in Isaiah 44.1, he's called the elect, Isaiah 45.4, apple of his eye, Zechariah 2.8. So the seed and the land forever in Genesis, the Abrahamic covenant. Now moving on, that all nations will be blessed through Jesus. The reason for choosing a people is to bring about the Messiah. And so all of the feasts and all of this done early on was to teach the people that their Messiah would come and who he would be. But it was already prophesied that they would miss the Messiah. Here is the Isaiah 9.6, uh, the birth of Jesus, um, that, uh, and then Revelation 13.8 that he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, and that John 4.22, salvation is of the Jews, referencing back, that we are grafted in as Christians. Now, if you're not a Christian, please bear with me here. Then Romans 11, that, uh, John, uh, I'm sorry, Paul describes that he is an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin, and that uh, God has not forsaken his people, only blinded them. So understanding this, now God, to understanding the Messiah coming through God in the flesh. Now, looking at evil, we are being exposed to the New World Order, the Illuminati, corruption. Uh, we looked at Ezekiel 8, passed in this, uh, where underneath the actual temple, they were worshiping the sun, facing the east, and worshiping the, uh, and the beasts, um, and the 24 elders, clearly in defiance to God. Global bankers, financial system, corruption, we can see that clearly, and it's being exposed already. Now, the reference to Israel, the Jews, Zionism, and this corruption, we can see that, and it's coming uh, uh, now. They are exposing the banking system and its connection to J Jews and Israel and Zionism. The occult satanic side of the truth movement is exposing a new world order from Zionism. We can see in Exodus 32.9 that they are a stick, ne uh, sorry, a stiff-necked people. And then, uh, so are we questioning evil here? Proverbs says evil was created uh, and God has created evil and evil is created for the day of evil. So understanding that we are all evil and this is all part of God's plan, none is righteous. So we should all, as Christians, we should all be relaxing and saying, hey, none's righteous. It's very interesting what's happening in these last days. If you think about it, uh, the world, the secular world, is going to blame these people of the world and, and forge in this new world order, which is a Luciferian agenda. The Bible says it's only going to be for seven years called the Great Tribulation. We are called as Christians to understand that none is righteous. It's almost like a saying, hey, if you're going to blame the Jews for your problems, you better look at yourself. This is what I believe is happening here. None is righteous. All have sinned. Romans 3.10 and 3.22. Israel not forsaken, only blinded tempor temporarily. If we understand prophecy, they are blinded. They will know Yahweh. Then they will know Jesus coming uh, in the tribulation. And then remnant always saved, Romans 11, Revelation 11, there's 144 remnant, plus many that are gathered throughout the world uh, that uh, will be a remnant. And Matthew 28, 16 to 20, as Christians, we are to focus on the Great Commission, the gospel being preached to the entire world. God will deal with his people, so let's relax, 
trust that God is going to deal with his people always. Amos says, of all the families of the world I have chosen, I have chosen you, Israel, and therefore I will punish you. <laughs> Pretty bold statement by God and truth ringing that he will always deal with his people. We are grafted into the promise, the Jews. And so, uh, but as far as the Jews themselves, the Torah Jews, they will have their eyes opened. And these are the people that put Jesus on the cross uh, and their seed that is still with us today. God will deal with his people always. Uh, warning, do not burden yourself. This says, Jerusalem. If you're going to burden yourself with Jerusalem, whether or not you're going to be warmongering, taking sides, or what have you, yes, we have to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the Bible says in Psalms. And Zechariah 12, 1-3 is specific. If you are going to burden yourself with Jerusalem, will you, you'll be cut to pieces. That Jerusalem will be a burdensome stone, and it is. So prophecy is fulfilled. So trust in Romans 11, 34 uh, through... Uh, Understand that all things are God's, uh, and everything uh, uh, is playing out to his purpose and plan. Now, looking from left to right, the Jews and the Gentiles, Romans 1 to 16, meaning to the Jew first, they were given the oracles of God, and now we are in the Gentile era where Paul goes out and preaches the gospel to the Gentile world. We in that, we're in that era, and now... Lastly, going through all of this to the blessed hope, we all have a blessed hope if we are in Christ, and this is heaven. So understanding God, Jesus, how important Jesus is in this realm. He is the most famous person on this planet. Everybody knows Jesus, but nobody knows who he is. Everybody knows the Bible. It's six billion plus Bibles around this world. If it is a control mechanism then everybody would be reading it. But nobody reads it. God, Jesus, is there evil? Yes. As the Christian, we're to relax and trust the word of God. We have Jews and Gentiles. The entire world is now allotted the blessed hope. We're just understanding this in this world. It takes humility to understand that we have a God that we serve. So understand this, research this, please do it for yourself. Don't just take it from me.